Make a table runner for spring. Hi, I'm Joanne Hillset from the Fat Quarter Gypsy, and today we're going to make a fun project applicating on felt. Today's project, I chose a really fun all over print, and then I coordinated fun fabrics with it in more muted tones. If you have trouble choosing fabrics for your table runner, go ahead and use a coordinated fabric line. It makes it a lot easier, and the work's been done for you. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is trace our pattern for the shapes onto fusible web. You can just lay with the adhesive side down, right on over your shape, and trace with a pen. This can seem like a lot of work, and so if you would prefer, you can use a printable fusible web. And here I have an example where I've printed right onto the fusible web. And as you can see, the lines are perfect and it was very easy. After you have traced all of your pieces, we'll go ahead and cut the pieces apart. You want to leave an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of paper around your shapes at this point, because we're actually going to be fusing these to the wrong side of the fabric, and later we'll be trimming down to the actual lines. So let's head over to the iron and fuse. Here I have one all ready to go. So just line your shape up on your fabric and just take your iron and fuse. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for iron temp and number of seconds. Once your fabric has cooled, you can come over and cut your shape out using your scissors to the line. Repeat this process for all of the shapes and all of the lettering. Before I start arranging my shapes on my felt background, I like to remove all of the paper pieces. If you just give a little tiny rip, you can get it started, and then peel the paper right off. So do that for all of your pieces, so that once you've arranged them on the felt, you don't have to move them again to remove the paper. So let's grab our felt background and get started arranging. So here I have all of my shapes ready to go. For this particular project, we're going to be placing a flower off to this side. And so I like to start with the E and work my way towards the W. If you've cut your felt evenly along the bottom, you can use the bottom edge as a guide so that your lettering stays, shape, or stays straight. So we'll just go ahead and start placing our letters. I like to leave about a quarter of an inch all the way around because in the end, we're going to trim the extra felt away to give our table runner a lacy look. You want your letters to be close together, but not too close together. You want to have enough area to trim away, but you don't want to trim so much away that your table runner doesn't stay together. I have one all fused and ready to go here, I'll show you. Now this design is just a guide, and really you can do whatever you would like to do, but some of these shapes have an important job, and I'd like to show you what. For example, the stems are strategically placed to help tie together some of the larger areas to be cut away so that they aren't quite as much. You don't want your table runner to come apart when you cut the extra felt away. You want it to stay co cohesively together. So once we have gone ahead and arranged all of our shapes and fused them back onto the felt, we can head to the machine and we're going to stitch our shapes down. So let's head to the machine. So before I begin, I like to wind two bobbins that match my background felt. I also take a scrap and check my tension because you don't want the bobbin thread to be coming up through to the top of your, of your table runner. As for color of thread, I'm going to use a white thread so that you can see my stitching, but you could use a, you could blend or you can contrast, that's really up to you. I'm going to use an open toe applique foot because I think that it makes it a lot easier to see where you're going to be stitching. So to get started, 
I break usually this up by color. So if I'll, I'll go ahead and do all of the blue first and then I'll switch to the next color. I always like to do a back stitch when I first start so that my stitches won't pull free. And then just stitch your buttonhole right along the edge of your shape. Take your time, this isn't a race. I like to put two hands flat to help guide it along. You could also hold on to an edge. When you come up to a corner or if you're working along a tight curve, you want to stop with your needle down. If you stop with your needle down, you're able to lift your presser foot, pivot your project and continue on and you haven't lost your, seam, your straight stitching line. So we'll go ahead and continue and finish up this section. Again, we'll back stitch. And then we'll go ahead and cut our thread. Now lift your presser foot and move to the next section. I like to cut the thread between sections because it's really easy to get tied up threads on the back with your thread snips. So let's go ahead and line up for our next section. Lower our needle. And we'll start and give that a little back stitch. And then we'll begin. And when we reach this corner, we're going to advance the needle so it finishes on the outside edge. Now lift your presser foot and pivot your project. And again, stitch. When we reach the corner, we'll stop. See, my needle has stopped on the inside, so we want to advance that so that it stops on the outside edge. Lift your presser foot, pivot, and continue on. You'll repeat this all the way through the entire project. Don't be afraid to just fold up your project so you can squeeze it through. So you'll continue stitching all the way around all of your lettering and all of your shapes. I'll stop here and we'll head over to the table and I'll show you the next step. So I've gone ahead and stitched these sections, stopped, cut my thread and continued on and you'll do that for all of the shapes. You want to keep ahead of the thread on the back of your project. Here again, I used a contrasting thread so you can see my stitching, but you probably would want to match your bobbin thread to your background felt. So here I have a project where I have completed the stitching. And now it's the fun part. It's time to make your table runner have a lacy look. So we'll go ahead and using a small pair of sharp scissors, we're just going to trim away the extra felt from around the outside edge. So I'll show you here on this flower. I like to leave about an eighth of an inch. I will backtrack and catch that section. And you'll do this all the way around. After you've trimmed all the way around the outside edge, you can work on the interior sections. Now you want to leave more. More is more in this project. If you have a section where it's not very far, less than half an inch, I would leave a piece of felt there. You can always come back and remove that felt afterward. So to cut out the interior sections, you can just fold your felt and make a small snip. Take your scissors and work your way in. Again, leaving that eighth of an inch of edging around. So, one of the fun things is choosing your fabrics and changing up your background. Here I've used the same fabrics for the shapes, but changed the background to a black and it completely changes the look. So if you have a darker table, you may want to use a lighter green and if you have a lighter table, you may want to choose a darker background. You can also switch out the fabrics and it's really fun to see how a simple change in fabric and color makes a completely different looking end product. 
And here's one more. For this one, I decided to use the main fabric as my jumping off point for all of my shapes. And that's how you make a lacy welcome runner.